Hello, I'm going to do a review today on this Lightwish Artist Grade watercolour set. I received it for free from them a couple of weeks ago, but I've saved it for today because it's on sale during our Amazon Prime sale couple of days. I've not tried out any paints from Lightwish before, so I'm curious to see how good these are. So they, first of all, they come in a nice sturdy cardboard box and they've got a microfiber cloth. It's very like Paul Rubin's presentation. I don't know if Lightwish are in some way connected with Paul Rubens, like a sister company or something, I'm not sure. So we've got a nice metal tin. And these are the two paints which I'd opened during my initial art haul video. So as I say, it feels like a nice quality uh, standard metal watercolour palette that holds 48 and this set also comes with a watercolour brush. So on the individual pan it says the vehicle is gum arabic, it gives us a pigment number PR254 in this case which is called Chinese red. It's given a light fast number and this is eight, and then a transparency rating. And there are just these um, little stickers that cover over. And these look like they are blocks which have been put in the pans, not poured in. But nice sturdy half pans. I've got no information as to how these have been light fast tested or anything other than what's written on the actual pans. So I'm going to go ahead first of all, take all the labels off and or swatch them out. I've stuck all the stickers onto a separate sheet which can be stored with a paint set. I've made a swatch sheet big enough for all the colours, though obviously there's not a huge amount of space for each one, but I'll paint them all out and then have a bit more of a play with them afterwards. Star in the sky could steal your light. You are the diamond in the dark. No oceans out there can wash you away. There is no way that you can break. The good in you makes a bad. But I see you're a fighter You're a fighter Now I see what life could be When you're standing next to me You're a fighter You're a fighter I'm high
So here they are all swatched out. My first impressions are that they're a very vibrant, easy to wet set, which was enjoyable to use. Most of the paints are single pigment paints, though I do have quite a few questions about the pigments because some of them didn't behave how I would expect. So I feel like taking the pigment information with a bit of a pinch of salt. I'll show you them up close. As far as the colours themselves go, there's quite a nice range here. A few feel quite similar to each other. So these four warm yellows here, I can't really tell much difference between. These oranges are kind of similar. There's a nice assortment uh, of greens and blues. These three yellowy browns here are quite similar. Though this one was noticeably more transparent than the other two. There were these two here, Gamboge Yellow and Cadmium Orange, which were both PY150s, which doesn't look anything like PY150s that I've come across before. The Cadmium Red had a little tiny bit of granulation. Uh, the French Ultramarine and the Cobalt Blue also had a little bit of granulation, like you might expect. Some of the Thalo colours like the PB15-3, the sea blue, and the emerald green deep PG7. They behaved like I would expect phthalo paints to behave, so with quite a heavy pigment load. These two greens here had the same pigments in them. Oh, I couldn't quite read. There was a PW pigment here. I couldn't read which one it was. So those might be the same pigments in diff different proportions. The PB36 and the PG26 didn't behave like a regular PB36 or a regular PG26. They actually just looked like they were other pigments but with a white pigment mixed with them. This Van Dyke Brown was probably the weakest. Well, in fact, the Lemon Sienna and the Van Dyke Brown those were the two that were harder to re-wet and were quite weak. Looking more closely at them, there are a few paints where you can see some kind of flocculation. So kind of texture, but it's almost like a scaly texture as opposed to granulation. And I've noticed this before in student grade paints. And another thing as well is, I don't know if I can get it to show up, but where the paint is more concentrated, some of the paints are a little bit shiny. It shows up in this scarlet and this violet. I'd say, to be honest, that these most feel like student grade paints in that they're quite uniform across the range. They remind me of Paul Rubens' student grade paints, so like the Mei Liang set. They're definitely enjoyable to use in how easily they re-wet and how nicely the set's put together. It does feel a nice quality set, but I don't think I would describe them as artist quality or artist grade. With the light fastness, it goes up to eight. And a lot of the paints are eights, but there are a few fives in there and some sixes and sevens. Nothing below a five, though. But as I said, though, I don't know what scale they've been tested to. I'll have a pele now and use the brush. When I'd showed this brush in my initial art haul, somebody had commented that this was a, a real animal hairbrush, but there's no information in the set that says one way or another, but it does feel very soft and like a squirrel hairbrush. I'll just do a bit of colour mixing now. So 
So this is the Chinese red and the permanent lemon yellow. So that's the PB17, the peacock blue. And this is what they named the France Ultramarine, the PB29. This is also a little bit weak actually. See the red's quite a staining one there. So the paints do mix and they are pleasant to use, but they don't have the feel of my like, artist grade watercolours. So the lemon yellow just doesn't have the same clarity and I can see this kind of um, flocculation, just a slightly strange texture to the blue. So this is my Daniel Smith Ultramarine. I'll just show you a comparison with some other paints as well. So this is the PB36 in the set. And this is Magello Mission Gold's PB36. So this is PG17 from the set, which is Hooker's Green well, <laughs> it's actually called Hooker's Green Brillite, a mixture of, I don't know if it's meant to be brilliant or light, but I know PG-17s as chromium greens or chromium oxide green, which is like a granulating opaque paint. So I guess my point is that although it's called artist grade colours, if you got the set expecting to have kind of standard artist watercolours from most other brands, although I know there's some variation in colours between other brands, I'd say that there's a bigger variation or a bigger jump from this set to other artist watercolours. But that's not to say that they aren't still nice paints to paint with. The set normally retails for £49.99 on UK Amazon, but for the 7th and the 8th of October, they're £10 off at 39 99 So it works out at less than a pound per half pan, which is a fraction of the price you'd pay for professional watercolour paints. I'll just talk about the brush for a minute. So it does feel very, very nice. It holds a massive amount of water and it's very, very soft. I could carry on a lot more than that with the same load and the, bri the bristles seem to behave themselves very nicely they come together in a point you could get a really nice wash with it and still be able to do a fair bit of detail with it So it behaves quite like a standard squirrel brush. As I say though, I don't know for sure what this is made of. I was looking for something to paint, just to try out the paints. And I pulled out this book, How to Be a Wildflower by Katie Daisy. And I thought that I'd like to paint a bee. I've never actually painted a bee before but we'll give this a go.
Sorry, my video cut out there. So here's the original painting. And I just did a slightly looser watercolour version. I used some of the white watercolour, which I don't really use very often, but it was nice to add in. I used smaller paintbrushes for the body of the bee, but I used the brush that came with the set for the brown surround, and it was really enjoyable to use. Overall then, my personal thoughts are that this is a very good student grade set. And I say that partly because I don't have any way of knowing how the light fastness was tested, partly because the pigments don't act quite like I'd expect the pigments to. There's a little bit of flocculation and shine to some of them. And there's just an overall uniformity to the paints. If you're looking for a wide range of colours, which are lovely and bright and re-wet easily and mix quite nicely, and you're not wanting to pay artist grade or professional grade prices, then I think this is a good set. And as I said before, comparable with the Paul Rubens student grade sets. I personally think I would prefer to buy far fewer professional grade paints for the same amount of money though. The presentation of the set's lovely and it would make a nice gift for someone starting out. I hope that's been helpful anyway. And it's been interesting to take a look at this set. I was quite curious about it. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye.